step 22 schedule update reports now that we have uh, the schedule update done in step number 21 um, we're gonna have to do some reports uh, you know there's two different types of reports that we're really gonna do um, if the projects on schedule which this one is not and we can tell by the negative float numbers uh, the we're gonna do um, you know we can do one of two schedules if we believe based on our analysis you know that maybe a schedule review got us behind or something else that is the customers or clients uh, you know uh, responsibility then we're not going to do a recovery schedule and the reason we're not going to do a recovery schedule is simply because we're not responsible for the delay so when we look at the critical path which we can go and we can filter by critical and we can look at the critical path task and you know if one of these tasks the review say the review set us behind or one of the other tasks set us behind that was the client's responsibility we're we don't have to do a recovery schedule that is the client's responsibility you would be entitled to a change order and the schedule update would use as supporting documentation for your time impact analysis which we're going to go through uh, in later videos um, so once again so if you do a schedule update and you're behind and you're behind because of something the client the government or you know or, basically anybody outside of you that you're not responsible for you know you, you know it's not a subcontractor that works for you or it's not your fault then you wouldn't do an, uh, a recovery schedule however if you're responsible for the delay because of something you didn't do you have to recover that time and as I went through in previous videos there's numerous different ways remember there's only four ways uh, one of them is, is we can add additional resources to an activity um, so we can change uh, the remaining duration. We can say we originally planned for, uh, you know, 10, but now we're going to double the amount of resources on it, and now we're going to be at five. Okay, that's so you're going to talk with somebody. You're going to explain that in the narrative section of the report, and uh, you're going to go through and change. And you see, we went from 31 to 26. Uh, we can go down here. And we can say the the column footings. Uh, test results. Those are going to take seven days. Well, maybe we got a three-day compression, uh, you know, through high early. We use high early, and we can do three days now. So you can see we can slowly wick, wick away at the uh, the amount of uh, negative float if we're responsible for it to recover it. So that is, um, you know, ultimately, you know, the responsibility of, uh, you know, of the contractor. Um, so as we go through the, you know, um, depending on how, whether it's the government's fault or our fault, we would name it, uh, you know, the recovery schedule. If it was, if it was a recovery schedule or we name it the schedule update. Now, if you recover the schedule, you, you will, before you start recovering the schedule, you're going to go ahead and do the, um, the reports. Um, you're going to do all the reports as a schedule update. You're going to show the negative float and then you're going to go through and you're going to do, um, the, you know, the schedule, uh, recovery, uh, schedule with all the reports. So if you're behind schedule, you don't only have to do one set of reports. You have to do two sets. You have to do one set for a schedule update and you have to do one set for a, um, for a schedule recovery. Now, what reports are you required to do? Um, well, you know, that's uh, uh, pretty much gone over in step number 20. You're going to do the same reports, except you're going to do them for the schedule update and the recovery schedule. So some of the res some of the reports are, and some of the key information to go through is you always want to do a print preview. So if we go file, you know, print preview. And you'll see it has a print preview here. We can look at it and we can, you know, view it and see if it's, uh, you know, the way we want it. Um, you know, we can zoom in and zoom out. Um, so we can zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. And we want to make sure everything is at least one wide. So um, you can see on, if we zoom all the way out, we want to make sure that the entire Gantt chart fits one wide over here. We can have 20 tall, but we only want one wide. Uh, 
So we want to do different reports. Some of the reports we want to do are, you know, the critical path reports, which we have here. We just basically turned on the filter, you know. Okay. So we turn on the filter and for critical path, and then we'd print this one. And this report would, would be titled the critical path file, print preview. And then we'd go ahead and, and you can see here, um, we would go ahead and uh, print this and then we'd print the PDF and we would name it the uh, critical path report uh, warehouse and then we put data date you know uh, one you know seven 2019 or whatever the date is you're actually uh, you're actually reporting on and then you'd put in here this would be uh, the recovery schedule or in another can if it was the update schedule you'd put um, you'd also put the month recovery schedule you know January uh, 2019 um, so that would be one way you could also put in here if this was a schedule update report you'd put monthly schedule update January you know so you get the point so um, and then so we're gonna do the reports we're gonna do is we're gonna do the critical path report which I just showed you uh, we want to do uh, we take off the critical path. We want to show all the activities. This is called the banded report, and I always make sure I hit the early early start and filter by early start. That is the banded Gantt chart. Okay, so we print banded Gantt chart. Continuous flow. We get rid of the WBSs. We get you know maybe le do the second level of the WBS. Let's see what that looks like. Um, we probably want to do the third level because I, I like to keep under the banded report or, or excuse me on the continuous flow I want to have pre-construction and construction because remember this is supposed to be used by say like a superintendent so he don't have to see all the banded areas so that would be the continuous flow report um, I can do the network diagram as we talked before just click there and look at the network diagram um, we do the uh, we did uh, uh, we can do the earn value reports. We go to tools reports, right? And then we could do the different reports in here. Uh, one is earn value, so we go to cost. And we're looking for the earn value report. Act activity earn value. You cl you right click and you run it. And you run a report. You want to print preview it, and you can see the the you know this this report. Um, you can see it's kind of quite lengthy. Um, it'll go through all the costs by the WBS or whatever, however you have it set up. Um, so the earned value reports are important because we have a cost loaded schedule. Um, we want to make sure we ultimately save it. Remember, there's two sections. That you're going to do two sets of these reports if you're behind schedule. You're going to do the uh, monthly schedule update report, um, and you're going to do a set of uh, a set of reports for that. So you're going to do on the monthly schedule update report. You're going to do a banded schedule, a continuous flow uh, schedule, a network diagram, a critical path. Uh, uh, report an earned value report and then we're also going to do a narrative which uh, I'll go through in a later video which we'll go through and explain exactly when the narrative that you need to update it's really put in the status anything changes uh, so that is uh, that is kind of the report so you do it for monthly and then for and if it you if it's delayed like in our case here we have negative float we would do a recovery schedule we do recovery banded schedule we do a recovery continuous flow schedule we do a recovery network diagram we do a recovery critical path report we do a recovery earned value report so we do a monthly um, a monthly schedule update banded gant a monthly schedule update continuous flow a monthly schedule update network diagram a monthly schedule update critical path a monthly schedule update earned value and we do a schedule recovery for all those exact same reports. Uh, very important that you have two. Um, 
if you're not behind schedule, you only have to do the monthly schedule update. You don't have to recover or do a recovery schedule because no recovery schedule is warranted. Now, if the government um, is responsible for the delay, you do not do a recovery schedule because if you redo a recovery schedule, you're owning that time. So we don't want to do a recovery schedule if it's not our responsibility. Um, we only do a recovery schedule if it is our responsibility. So that pretty much covers uh, how we go through and we print the different reports. Uh, then the I will show you that there's there, there's hundreds of different reports. You can build a whole bunch of different reports. A lot of them are built here for you. Um, if it most clients don't have a spe specific requirement outside the reports I, sh I showed you in step 20 and I showed you here. However, um, you know, there's some specifications that require uh, a lot more reports, like an activity report, a logic report, um, and all those reports should be contained in here. You can also edit those reports. You can develop reports, uh, which we can we can go through in a later step. So that covers step number two, schedule update reports. Um, so I can't reiterate enough that, you know, that you have to do a monthly schedule update reports, a set of those reports. Then you recover your time if you're responsible for a delay. And then you print another set of reports as your recovery reports. So two different things you're looking at. You're looking at the current status with the monthly update reports. Then you go through and recover the time using, you know, smart relationships, increased resources, changing the materials, changing the means, and then you do a recovery schedule if you're responsible uh, for the delay. That is probably the most important part of this uh, entire uh, step. So that covers schedule update reports. Yeah.